All right, I think we're back. Sorry about that. Okay, it's back. Let's go. I hope I haven't scared everyone off by that happening. I have absolutely no idea why any of that just happened whatsoever. But hopefully you can all hear it okay. I think maybe I'm a little bit too loud. Maybe let me turn that down just a little bit. And turn the game down to right there maybe. And I think we're set. So this is the PlayStation 2 version of Nights into Dreams. And hopefully we'll get a few people coming through. So there are a few different options here. We've got a gallery, we've got a music theatre. <clears throat> and while I'm waiting for a few people to join, now that they might actually join, now that you can actually hear the game, I'm just going to give it a minute to go through the uh, intro cutscene. And I'm also recording this for a video that I'm working on, of course. So hopefully this is all live and up and running okay. I had a lot of trouble with the settings trying to get this to work properly. It's my first time trying to capture from the PlayStation 2. And um, it was a modded PS2 with the HDMI cable, but the HDMI cable for whatever reason just does not seem to work properly. So I ended up having to switch it for composite cables and run that through the OSSC and then use some sort of deinterlacer. So it's a very awkward way of doing it. But it seems like it's working now. Let me know whether it looks and sounds okay. Should be fine. My OBS is a complete mess. I have like 15 different audio settings now. Just for the microphone and for the game to get it all working properly. Ah, what a mess. What a confusing mess. But anyway, I think we're here. I think, I think it's working. Fingers crossed anyway. And it's been a while since I streamed last. So I'm actually really looking forward to this. So, hello, I can see there's five people watching at the moment. We are playing the PlayStation 2 version of Nights into Dreams, which I've got here. This is actually a special edition of it, which I'll be showing in the video. Which is not actually going to be on my channel, it's actually going to be on a friend's channel. But I'm going to put a lot of effort into making it a really good video. So, it also comes with this, uh, what would you call it, like a storybook? Like a kid's nighttime storybook thing. Of course it's all in Japanese, but it's got some really nice artwork in there. So I was really happy to get this when I went to Japan many years ago. I think this was when I went there in 2014 I actually picked this up. So I've had it for a long time, but for whatever reason I've never really shown it off in a video. And it's not like I don't want to. I've been planning a Nights into Dreams video for a long time. So anyway, now we've got a few viewers, we can actually start the game properly. And I'm going to try and not pull the PS2 off the shelf behind me because the cable is literally going back there, if you can see. So anyway, PS2, Nights into Dreams. We've got a few different options. We've got the Sega Saturn Dream, which of course, as the name suggests, is basically the Sega Saturn game, with a few differences. It's, um, it's not actually emulated, it's all made from scratch for the PS2. We've also got Brand New Dream, which has a few extra graphic settings. We've got a gallery, a, mu a movie theatre, options and something unlockable as well so let's get started with the ps2 version which is what i'm sure a lot of you are looking forward to seeing so let's see and while that's loading i'll just get my dashboard off on the laptop over here and yeah the loading is a little bit longer than on the saturn original because obviously there's more graphics to load in and stuff and I don't think the PS2's disk drive was that much faster than Saturn, but correct me if I'm wrong there. Anyway, there we go. We have excellent connectivity. Fantastic. Right, so we can choose either Elliot or Clarice. Let's start with Clarice. And we'll move on to Elliot. First thing you'll notice is the character um, 3D models are way more detailed and have way more polygons than they did on the Sega Saturn, as to be expected. But it's still really cool to see. And of course, it just looks a lot nicer as well. Just like the Saturn version, it's also got built-in full, proper widescreen support, which is always good. And for those of you that don't know what Nights into Dreams is, I'll briefly explain how to play it. So, 
as you can see, you fly around and you basically have to pick up all the blue balls and then deposit them in this sort of weird brain thing that's hanging around. And there's also a point system where you can run through as many of these sort of rings as possible. There's also a little AI system as well, so you see these people on the floor here. If you draw circles around them, I think he might be a bit too far away. Let's see if we can get this guy here. If you draw circles around them, basically they go into like a chow garden style thing. Or at least they did in a newer game. I think in this one it just does things like change the music in the background and stuff like that as you go in. And then once you've deposited all the balls, then you're basically free to explore the level. Try and get as many points as possible before the time runs out. And I'm playing with a little bit of lag, so it's kind of difficult to do this. So I'll try my best anyway. So that timer at the top basically is how long you've got for this lap. So you'll want to... Let's see if I can get a good combo here. So as you can see, that link number was going up then. And the higher that link number goes, the more points you get and the better rank you get. So you want to try and memorize the loop for the level after you've deposited all the crystals like that and get a full loop 23 and then we've got a B rank on that section and then we're moving on to part 2 of the level and I know you haven't really seen the Saturn version to do a comparison of but the graphics are much improved they're just a lot smoother overall it's not like they're radically different or anything but it does just look a lot nicer overall and I just love this game. I love the themes. I love the style of it. I love how colourful it is. Hey, let me know in the comments if any of you guys have ever played Nights into Dreams before. Let me know what you think of it. There is one weird thing with this PlayStation version, which was a little bit of a downgrade from the Saturn. And that is the fact that the Saturn version had full 360 degrees of movement, whereas this PS2 one is actually limited to 8. Uh, directions even though it uses an analog controller so some of the moves that you were able to do in the Saturn game you're not quite able to do in this one but it doesn't really make that much difference it's still really fun to play and now we can try and get a good link in this level I used to be really good at night so I used to memorize all the levels and stuff and be able to get full combos going all the way around but it's been a long time and I do not have the time to dedicate to memorising all these different layouts these days. And it is really difficult to play with this controller. And my controller, unfortunately, um, is very old. And the analog stick doesn't really feel that good. So, not the best experience here. But I'm still really glad to actually finally be showing the PS2 version of Nights into Dreams. Because it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Hey, Starlux here. And Gone Mad Trions here as well. Hello to both of you. How is your evenings so far? Have you ever played Nights into Dreams before? Have you ever played the PS2 version in particular? I'll try and point out some more of the differences as I'm playing through. Most of them are just graphical, but there are a few gameplay tweaks as well. And like I said, it's also got a Saturn mode as well, so I'll show you a bit of that later on too. So this bit here basically means that you need to try and do as many different tricks as possible within the time limit that that ribbon stays attached to you. So there we go, I got six, uh, six different moves there in a row. And let's try and go a bit faster here. I missed that one. Let's go around again. I know there's some at the top if we got this way. So basically, you spend the first part of the level going around and picking up as many blue orbs as you can to go and deposit them, and then you can spend the rest of the time uh, you can spend the rest of the time learning the level layouts, trying to get the best scores. Ah, I'll show you what that is as well. So there was an egg down there, and that is part of the A life system. So if you touch the egg like that, then it will actually hatch into one of those creatures. Oh no, you failed the Kex lottery. I hate it when they do reprinted covers. I hope the game wasn't too expensive for you. Let's see if I've got enough time for one more lap here. 
I'll try and go faster. Ah, oh, just missed out on keeping that combo up then. You can see how there is a lot of skill to this game if you want to try and get through it properly with like a full combo. And of course there's also a really strict time limit and it's about to run out! Oh god, I made it right to the end there with three seconds to go. But we got an A rank, which is good, and now we're on to part three of the stage. And that is also something else that changes the levels in some ways. I've never really put that much thought into the A life system, but it is quite a complex thing. Like, all the different little things that you can find throughout the levels, separate to just playing the main... I don't even know what kind of game you'd call this. Puzzle game? Platformer? Action game? It's not a platformer, there's no platforms. I really don't know what Nights into Dream Sex is. I'm just going to keep going around and pick up some more orbs and then deposit them on the second lap, I think. And yeah, you don't need to worry about touching the pedestal on your first lap because you won't be sucked off to the next part of the stage anyway. Deposit them, which was just here. There we go. And I'm failing this pretty badly. Let's see if we can get two laps in, maybe. Oh, I missed all them as well. Okay, so when you're doing your second lap, you have to actually intentionally avoid. There's another egg there, let's hatch that. You have to intentionally um, avoid the pedestal so you don't get sucked off. So the next part of the level, or I believe it's actually the boss fight that's coming up now. I always love that bit where you just let go of everything and just float up the mountain. Let's hatch another egg. And now we are running out of time, so we better get a move on. I always leave it till the last second to get all the extra points. Hopefully I haven't left it too late. Yeah, four seconds to go, there we go. And we've got another A rank, and now we're off to the boss fight. And I always love this boss. This is a very memorable boss for me. So there we go, we've got overall an A rank on there. Ah, Atelier Verona. Well, good choice of game. Was it Atelier Verona Plus, or was it the original version? It's worth trying to get the Plus one as well, because um, it has a few... It has much improved graphics, actually. There is actually a cheat to kill this boss in one hit. You actually need to try and do a spin around his tail, right on the point of it, but I'm not going to try it now because uh, I'll probably end up dying. It took me a long time to get that working properly on the PS3 version. This is one of the very few games that I've actually got a platinum trophy for on the PlayStation. And one of the trophies was for killing this boss in one hit, but it's so difficult. And if you fail, you have to go back and do the whole level again before you get to this point. I love this boss music as well. It's so atmospheric. Yeah, he's, nearly, he's nearly dead. He does actually attack you, but the way I'm doing it, you can just keep going underneath his chin and just keep bouncing off him. And eventually he'll die. I think he's got one more hit left. And interesting fact, the Sega Saturn version of this level is actually the engine that the Sonic Extreme team tried to use to make their game, but Yuji Naka told them they weren't allowed to use it. So that's always interesting to kind of get a glimpse into what Sonic could have been on the Sega Saturn. I always thought that was really interesting. And I like doing tricks there at the end as well. And overall for Spring Valley we got a B rank. Not too bad. And then you'll go back to the level select screen and then you get to choose... Uh, let's just say you want to save on the memory card, yep. Let's save on there. Finally put in my modded PS2 to use. And yeah, if you didn't see it earlier, there's the box. Really nice big box as well. And it came with a few extras which I'll be showing in the video. The video is not actually going to be on my channel though, so keep an eye out on Twitter or wherever you see my messages to know where that's going to be uploaded to. I'm not sure whether I can tell you just yet, so it's kind of a secret. <coughs> okay, and then that basically just shows you where you are on the, on the maps. I have no idea what that hint is meant to be. Blow up the capsule, maybe. It's not really a hint if that's what you need to do in order to actually play the game. 
So we're going to wait for it to load. I don't know why it kicks you back to the title screen after you finish each level. So shall we do Elliot's first stage or shall we carry on with Clarice's second part of the level? Let's do Elliot's first level as well. We can kind of alternate between the two of them. Um, got to get a modded PS2 for Tiny Toons. Oh yeah. You know you want to get a modded system. For the authenticity, it's got to be done. They're not even that expensive actually. I think I paid like 80 for mine and I had a HDMI mod and region free. And it's also got a built in hard drive as well with loads of games already installed on it. Which is pretty cool. Now, here's something I wish they'd done more of with the Nights into Dreams series, is more of these on-foot sections. So before you start the level, you do actually get a bit of time, if you want at least, to, to wander around. You know, maybe find some eggs to hatch. Find some orbs on the floor like this. So you can kind of get a bit of a head start before you start the level properly. Yeah. You are kind of limited though, and there will be a giant stopwatch coming to hunt you down if you don't get there in a certain time. I think you can do a front flip as well. Yeah, there we go. And then we can set off as knights with a bit of a head start because you already picked up some of the orbs. Whoa, destroyed it instantly. There we go. And then you can just spend the whole of the first level as well, just. Just uh, finding all the different secret areas like that bit. And of course, dodge the uh, entrance to the stage because you don't want to finish the stage just yet. And there's also a ball there, which I'll show you on the next loop round. But basically, when you pick that up, you have to keep a combo going because as soon as the combo stops, then uh, it basically runs out and you lose all those points. So if I go back up here and try and hit that this time, there it is. So. It counts down that number of seconds, and yeah, I just missed out there. Let's try going back up here. I'm not sure if there's a way of keeping that combo going. I'm presuming there is, because I think you can get around all the different levels with full combos. Let's try it again. So you got to go faster. Yes, did it. There you go. So you can see that pop open. There were supposed to be loads of crystals that come out of it, but I think because we've already picked them all up, maybe they weren't quite showing. So. We've still got a few more laps we can do here. Let's see if we can do better. That was not good. That was actually much worse. So there's nothing at the end there, so I think you do have to go up if you want a full, a full round. But you can see how this game gets really addictive really quickly to try and find the best routes through all the levels. Ooh. And now we're running out of time, so I should probably finish the level here. I think I got an A rank. Yeah, A rank. We're moving on to the second part of the stage. And again, I love the theme of this of this level. There's a really cool like overhead view of a clock coming up on the next bit as well, which is made out of the flowers on the floor. Let's try going down here. So even though the levels are kind of linear, you've still got a few different options. Hey, there was a card there, it disappeared. You've still got a few different options of the route you want to take. I think it's on the next route round that you get to see that clock. Oh yeah, and the enemies take off some time, so obviously that gives you less of a chance to try and get all the points. And I haven't actually seen the crystal thing. Where is it? Oh, there's some extra ones out. There it is. So this one's kind of a long track. Ah, oh, I got hit again! Oh no, did you hear that Dreamland buff? I'm not sure whether I've got it on the right channel or not. I'll pause it after this and see whether I can get it working. I was having loads of trouble earlier with the sounds on OBS. Oh no. Running out of time. That's the one time you don't want to hit that. Oh 
Oh my god, oh my god, one second! Oh, that was close. Damn, only a C rank. Right, I'm gonna pause for a second so I can try and fix that Kirby Bop. See which one it's coming out of. A light box, maybe? Desktop audio, maybe. Could you guys hear it or not? Let's try that one. Audio input, audio output. Let's try again. It's got to be one of these. Oh no, I don't know where it's gone. No Kirby. It should be coming out of alert box, but it's not showing any sound for some reason. Okay, I can hear that. Oh, you can see all my test things. But can we hear Kirby? So they're coming out of light box. But Kirby's not coming out of anywhere. Weird. Never mind. If anyone if anyone redeems the noise, I'll just have to make it myself. I'll try and fix it next time. Yeah, I can't explain why that's happening. Always something going wrong, isn't it? Uh, this one's a bit of a confusing stage as well. There's loads of different routes you can go through. Ah, I got stuck in the wall. This is the bit, I think, with the with the clock in the floor. There it is. I got really excited when I noticed that the first time. I was like, oh, that's a really cool little attention to detail. And it looks a little bit nicer on the PS2 as well. you going to give me something. Yeah. And then we got another one of these um, trick things, trick loops. There was another thing on the PS3 version in order to get one of the trophies. I think you have to do 12 tricks in one go. Which is basically you just have to keep mashing the button as fast as possible. But some tricks cancel other ones out and stuff, so you have to be a bit careful as to which ones you choose. If you go through there, as you can see, this is another one of those countdown things. And yeah, we got that one. Now let's see whether I can do this bit a bit better than last time. So, I'm trying to work out the route that it's trying to take you there, I think. You're supposed to go down there most of the time and then go back around this corner and then zoom off up here and then go around these. And if anyone's a Nights into Dreams expert and you're watching me play, you're probably just banging your head against the wall like how badly I'm doing. Okay, I'm nearly out of time as well. I don't know whether I can actually make another loop. I'm going to attempt it though. Oh no, not if I do that. Uh, I'm scared though. Five seconds, we're not going to make it. Oh no, now you get to see what happens if you run out of time. And then this really scary alarm clock's going to come out and try and eat me. In a minute. There we go, he's started moving now. Uh, and you have to follow the arrow to get back to Mike's so over here. But yeah, as you saw, the water just bounces you back. No, go away! Uh. Oh, he didn't actually do anything. I thought it was game over if it touches you. You've got to go back over here, back tonight. Ah, uh, I know, E. That's sad. Let's see if we can make up for it on this round. And then we get to do the underwater section. And there's a cool 3D bit as well in a minute. Uh, let's go back up there. Yeah, got it. Now it goes 3D. It's kind of awkward to control. 
because the uh, uh, yeah the controls are really fast, even faster on this than on the Saturn. But it's cool that it mixes the perspective up a bit, and there's a bit later on as well in the. Uh, I think it's a art gallery level. I think it's supposed to be an art gallery anyway. That looks really cool. Let's see if we can do this again. Yeah, yeah, that's an easy one. And you can hold the boost button down as well to get through this bit a bit faster. Which I think you need to do if you want to keep up the combo all the way through the stage. I need to be a bit less reckless with the time limit. Oh, I'm sad that the noises aren't working. I only just got them working last session as well. I think I'll make this the last round. I don't want to waste any more time. Okay, that was good. I got all the bits in there, though. Yeah, I'm going to end it there. Let's see. I'm thinking maybe a C. Oh, I got an A. Awesome. Uh, the transition to ground threw me off so much the first time I ran out of time. Yeah, it's a really, really weird thing that you probably wouldn't expect to happen. And then it's like... I kind of wish Sega made a lot more like 3D exploration bits as well on foot to go along with the flying. Although they would have had to do something to change the camera because the default camera is horrible. Here's another really memorable boss fight. I don't know why but I remember as a kid when I played this level my sister used to really love this fight for some reason. But yeah, bounce the fat lady around. <laughs> I used to really struggle with it as well, so I know where all the things are to destroy now, but you have to you have to obviously hit her away at the right angle so that it destroys things and then she'll get crushed by that big painting on the wall. So that is how you do that fight. I think I did that pretty good, apart from a little bit of a mess up at the end. And then at the end here you can actually hold down the L and R buttons and do tricks too, which is kind of fun. The tricks at the end don't actually do anything, they're just just for fun. Now I presume this is saying do you want to save to the memory card, but I'm not hundred percent sure. So I think I've think I've saved it. I think. Maybe. And then the annoying thing where it kicks you back out to the title screen. And you have to sit it through a loading screen as well. So now you get a nice little relaxing replay of what you just did and you can press the triangle button to get rid of the scores as well so you can just watch it play through and I did actually used to leave this on in the background while I was doing other things like back in college I would I played a lot of nights and streams back in college like in the mid 2000s and when I would, when I was doing my coursework I would just play a few levels of nights and then just finish one stage and then just leave it on this um, on this replay screen on the Saturn version, not on the PS2 though. And then just listen to the nice music and watch it playing through what I'd just done, so... It was really fun. I do really love this game. Has anyone else uh, watching played Nights into Dreams before? Or have you played the sequel on the Wii as well? Journey of Dreams. Which I also really enjoyed. A lot of people give that game an undeserved bad rap in my opinion. It's a lot better than what people make it out to be. So now we have two options. We can either go to the next stage that we just did fairly at, or to the second stage of Clarice's thing. So one of them is the forest, which is Clarice, and the other one is another sort of dream environment one. Let's go to the forest. I'm not a huge fan of this level. There is a really cool bit at the end, though, where you can get loads of points if you manage to get the combo thing all the way to the end of the stage. So let's see whether we can do that. And there's a top-down section as well where you can get kind of lost. But Again, the music's fantastic. The music in the entire game is just top-notch. 
feel like it's some of the best, some of the best in any Sonic Team game, honestly. And of course, just like any good Sonic Team game, it also has a vocal theme for the ending. And yes, of course, I know all the words because <laughs> I'm just such a huge nerd. Pretty short first loop here. Let's see if there's anything else we can find. Sometimes if you do go back on yourself or you know explore further down or higher up, you'll end up finding things that you didn't know as you were going around the level for the first time. And I'm just playing this for fun, I'm not playing it to get uh, A ranks and everything. So. Oh, I need one more. There we go. Pick that up and then go back again. Haven't played the Wii version for years, so you don't remember much. It's very different. There aren't any levels like this. Basically, there's different missions for the, each stage, and the different missions have slightly different gameplay mechanics. Like, there's one where you're chasing something. Uh, there's one where you have to kill a certain number of enemies. There's a lot more on-foot sections as well, where you get to play... I can't remember what the, what the other two kids' names are. It's Elliot and Clarice in this one, and I've completely forgot. Huh. I really can't remember. It was actually one of the first videos that I ever did, was a review for Night's Journey of Dreams, and then a review for this original one. And I watched it back the other day, and it's so bad. I made it 14 years ago, and it's basically unwatchable. Okay, we've got an A rank anyway. Pretty forgiving then with their ranking systems. I think the fog is new for this PS2 version. Kind of gives it a nice dreamy atmosphere. Did I go to the London gaming market? It's on in two weeks' time actually. And yeah, I'll be I'll be going. I'm kind of half there, but I'll also half be at Comic Con in Birmingham as well. So I'm I'm in Birmingham on the Saturday and the Sunday, and then I'm actually going to get the train from New Street, uh, from Birmingham International to London Euston to go to the gaming market on Sunday, and then go back to Birmingham at the end of the day. So I've got a very busy weekend coming up in a few weekends time. But yeah, I'll be at the London gaming market if anyone wants to see me there. There's loads of these blocks that you can destroy in this stage as well, and obviously, as you can see, they hide more of the Idea Crystals behind them. Not that I need them at this point, but if you're going for points, then you want to smash all the boxes, and when you're going around on the second loop, then you can nab all those extra bonus points. I've got 37 seconds. I think I can do one more. Although, I am not paying any attention to the layouts on this one, so no loot bonus for me on this round. Let's go into the finish. Only B that time. Oh, he made me tiny! That's one of the things that the enemies in this stage do. It makes you go a little bit slower. So, obviously, if you were trying to get your combos. Now, this is the bit I was talking about earlier. If you manage to keep your combo up all the way to the end here, which, unfortunately, I didn't manage to. Oh, I did! Then you get to go down here, and then you've got another one of these combo things, and a roulette. Oh, I missed it already. Yeah. So, the idea is that you make the loops here, and you can pick up the stars in the background. And you've got to try and do that for 20 seconds in order to get loads of extra points, but, unfortunately, I didn't manage to do it. Maybe on the second loop. So let's try and go around again. And there's just loads of different um, different ways you can go about this stage too. Let's try it again. No, I missed it. So you also have to... Oh, weird. It's still let me in. So on the Saturn, it's usually a bit more stricter than that. That's why I'm quite surprised I managed to get in there so easily. Although I failed that badly because I hit the ceiling. I'm going to go back outside. 
feed that brain some blue crystals, else I'm going to run out of time. I think it was up the top somewhere. Have I missed it? No, it's right there. All right, one more, one more attempt. Let's try. Let's see if we can do both of them. Although obviously there's no trophies to aim for. That was it. That was perfect. And can we do this perfect as well? Yeah, come on, seven, six, five. Yeah, we did it. The timing seems a little bit off. I don't know whether that's because of my modern system or not. Oh God, no, we've only got five seconds. You don't want to run out of time in there. There we go. That's got to be an A rank, surely. Yes. Now, yeah, always speed past that bit because it can close in on you and you lose five seconds if that happens. But you don't want to run out of time. see someone's commented but I can't look away. This is a bit of a maze as well, this section. This is what I was on about just now. There are a few crystals hidden in there, so it's still worth exploring, but it's not one that I've ever... Oh yeah, you have to dash through that bit as well. It's not one I've really memorised. I'm just guessing. That must be the exit there. There we go. Hopefully I don't have to go back in there for too long. Let's get on one Oh yeah, I think the, the thing to deposit them is hidden somewhere in this section too. So, I'm going to try and find that somewhere. There it is. Kind of can't really tell what it is from that angle as well. Oh no, I've only got 17 seconds. Uh, I remember where to go. Down here and then go right. Nine, eight, seven. There we go. Back to the boss fight for this stage. Right, Professor Sea Dog. I have this game in my Steam library somehow, and I've been meaning to try it out for a while. It looks interesting. Yes, it's a very interesting game, and it's got a very interesting uh, story behind it, its development as well. How everything's based around the the concept of dreams and the sort of imagery that you would see in a dream as well. Well, the graphics in this section are definitely much improved compared to the uh, compared to the Saturn version. So the idea is that you wait for the fish obviously to get in front of you and then and then you can use one of these fish to fly from one side of the screen to the other and hopefully hit him on the way. Easier said than done. I don't really know an easy way of doing this one like I do with the other fight. Because, uh, yeah, on the first fight, there's a way of actually doing it. Ah, oh, I don't know why he's hitting me so much. Gotta wait for him to stop attacking, maybe. Okay, that got him. Yeah, there's a way of doing the first one without, uh, without getting hit at all. Do I do it? Yeah, I did it. Somehow. I don't really understand that fight, really. You were making videos 14 years ago as well. Back in the good old days of YouTube. When it had a star rating system. And um, video responses. All that good stuff that's no longer around. And the custom channels as well. All the custom themes, custom wallpapers. The ability to send messages to people on YouTube. It was so much better back in the day. Google ruined it. Or maybe that's just me being an old fart. <laughs> and Twitch didn't even exist back then. I found an old screenshot on my computer and the uh, URL was something Ustream 
like, oh my god, wow, that doesn't exist anymore. There we go. Yes, save complete. I don't know if it's really worth the effort of me saving every time. If I'm going to play through the whole game now, may as well just save at the end. I'll have a look at some of the other stuff here, actually. So let's have a look in the gallery, see if we've unlocked anything. Or, okay, so we've unlocked some stuff. Cool. Let's take a look at what's in here. Just some classic Nights and Streams artwork. I think a lot of this stuff comes off the Christmas Nights and Streams disc for the Saturn. So there we go. 12 nice renders of Nights. Well, I guess these are for the different characters. But we'll take a look at that later. And I'll show you a bit of Saturn Dream after once we've played through the main stages. But it's basically taking the Sega Saturn models and putting them into the PS2 version of the game. So it's not really that different. It's not the actual original Saturn game itself. Contrary to what most people think, it's not actually emulated at all. It was all rebuilt for the PS2. They put a lot of effort into something that stayed Japan exclusive. I love this level as well, the music again. Awesome. You've only got the Xmas version on the Saturn. That's still cool to have though. I try and play it every year. I forget most years. I know the year uh, last year or maybe the year before, I actually did play it all the way through on Christmas Day. But most of the time I just end up playing it at some point in between Christmas and New Year and just end up changing the time to make it Christmas Day on the Saturn itself. I do kind of like the idea of having it as a tradition. And considering it's just a little demo disc, there is a lot to do on it. There's like 30 different presents to unlock. And there's loads of cool little bonus features, like you can unlock Sonic and you can run around as him. I only need one more. Yeah. And that was actually, I think apart from Sonic Jam, that's the only time you can actually run around in 3D as Sonic on the Saturn, so it's just a cool thing to have. And it's another look into what could have been with uh, Sonic Extreme on the Saturn, which of course was going to be the main big Sonic game for the Saturn, but a lot of development trouble happened along the way, and they basically just didn't know what to do with the game, I think. Which is the shame, although from what I've seen of the pre-release videos, it's probably not a bad thing that it got cancelled, because it really didn't look that good anyway. Oh, I'm actually doing pretty well this time. I should try and do that on the spin. You can see how fast this game gets as well if you're trying to get a good combo going. Oh, I keep missing that one. Stop there, I think. It's got to be an A. Yes. We've got another one of these. Can we keep it going? No. Okay, this bit's weird. So you've got all these different poles that you can spin on. And some of them give you some A-life things like that and some of the stuff. But most of it's just for links, which, of course, just help to get that A-rank. But it's just the blue things that you really need in order to finish the stage. Just some ones. There's also a snowboarding or toboggan section coming up. Which is more frustrating than fun, honestly. You'll see in a second what I mean by that. Especially if you're trying to keep your combo going. It's really difficult. Only three already. I think it's on the next loop round. So let's see if we can find a good route through here. Why is it trying to send me up there? It wants me to go back on myself. Uh, maybe you can use these to get extra points. But at this point, it doesn't really matter what direction you take around the level as well. You've just basically got that amount of time left in order to, you know, just collect as much stuff as you can before you move on to the next section. But then you're obviously left with big empty spaces with nothing going on like that. 
Ah, how did I miss all them? There's also a load there as well. Let's try and get all them. Am I being too risky? I should probably go back. Okay, that's enough. I got scared. Yeah, another A rank. Yeah, Yuji Naka is probably one of the reasons that Sonic Extreme never got made. Because he was overly protective of his game engine. Wasn't there different versions of the game being made by different companies as well? I remember reading or hearing that the conditions were so bad that like, people were getting ill from making the game and not seeing their family for months on end and stuff. It just sounds horrific all around, honestly. They were probably under so much pressure, it was like they didn't have anything planned for the Saturn and the system was failing and stuff that they really felt like they needed. They needed to have the game out and it just fell through at every every point. So I can understand why it didn't get released, but it's still disappointing. But obviously at least Sonic Adventure came out and they kind of had a better idea of what they actually wanted that game to be. I feel like one of the problems with Sonic Extreme is that they didn't really know what the game was. I've seen so many different videos of the game and it always looks completely different throughout the different stages of development. Yeah, this is an, unfortunately there's a lot of stories of game developers being overworked and underpaid and having to do mandatory overtime and stuff. It's really not a good industry. Well, it's improving these days, I, I think. I hope. But yeah, not good. Especially back then. Especially in Japan as well, apparently. Some of the stories that I've read in the uh, untold history of Japanese game developers, there's some real horror stories about how many hours they were expected to work, like finishing work so late that there's no trains back home so you end up sleeping on the office floor and then just waking up at 6 in the morning and then just starting work straight away because you've got nothing else to do and going home just once a week at the weekend just to shower and eat, it sounds horrific sometimes. So. There's a dark side behind some of your favourite Japanese retro games. So, although this toboggan bit looks fun, it can be quite annoying because if you get stuck in this section with the time running out, there's nothing you can do about it, so you just sort of flop out of the other end and then go back to running around on foot. But we've got time to do one more. And I can see whether the... Uh, with the bonus thing will actually go through this time. I keep missing all the speed ups. Yeah, I missed them all again. I got that one. I think you're supposed to... Well, you need four more, so I'm guessing you just need to get all of that. Uh, a 2D Sonic on the Saturn would have been fantastic. Yay, got an A rank. Yeah, I didn't do very well on that last bit. And I didn't get an A because I didn't open up that last capsule as well. Never mind. Right, so in this fight, you just have to um, hit the ones that are sparkling. Like that. And then you'll just swap around and then you can attack him. I don't really understand what they are. They're like fireworks, but cats. I've never really questioned like what is going on in this one. I really don't know. No, we can go and get him. I think that's it. Yeah, really weird boss. You don't really need to do anything on that one. And then you get a points multiplier depending on how many points you got in the stage. Yeah, like a weird cat and mouse style boss fight. Cat and mouse nightmare. But there we go, another fun level. 
And I'll show you a bit of the art book that comes in here as well while it's loading the next section. I said I wouldn't save, but I will just in case. So while that's loading, and also inside the box came with this, which is like a, a storybook with some really nice artwork inside. So it's got obviously the story on that side, all in Japanese. And then on the right, you've also got some really nice artwork of different characters and different locations throughout the game. So I'm really happy to have this. Like, if you can see it on the camera, it might be a bit too bright. But yeah, there you go. It looks really nice. And I'll be showing it off in the video. Just thought you'd like to see that. And now we have to wait for it to go back to the title screen because for some reason they thought that was a good idea. Right. Yeah, I love the artwork in this. When I was learning Japanese, my goal was to be able to read this book. But that never happened. Let's not talk about that. Let's jump back in. It's really annoying, it doesn't start you back on the level select screen. Why would they think after each level you want to go back to the start of the entire game? I'm just going to go through them like this. This is another fun one. This is the sort of museum slash art exhibition thing. Soft museum it's called. I like the way the floor sort of bends and warps as you're going around on this one too. Definitely very dreamlike aesthetic. That effect with the sort of shimmering background, that's new for the PS2 version. That didn't happen in the Saturn original. Oh, I love this music so much. There you go. You can see how the floor warps as you're going through it. Such a nice effect. And if you go straight down on here, you can bounce off them. And I failed that miserably, but that's how you, that's how you get that one to break open. There's also an into the screen bit in this one, kind of like in Elliot's underwater section, which we'll get to a bit later on. Right, it's halfway done. Let's see if we can do this better this time. Yay, there we go, perfect. The best thing to do there is just to let go of the controller altogether. I think there's one here as well. Uh, there's some orbs. something up there as well, yeah. So we've got plenty now to be able to break open that capsule. And we have about 60 seconds. Let's see how fast we can get through it. Six length, that's pretty good. Let's see if I can beat that. 29 length, okay. Let's try and do a few loops this time, see if we can get even better. Ah, oh, damn it. Gonna run out of time. That's probably the most fun thing about knights is trying to perfect your lap after you've got all the crystals. This bit's cool as well, inside the museum. There's a really nice bit a bit later on uh, with some mirrors, which looks really cool. On both the Saturn version and the PS2 version. It's easy to run out of time though, because how the floor stops you from moving for a second. So the idea here is that you need to boost into those pads on the floor to crack them open like that. But it's kind of difficult to line up. Uh, there we go. But you can get loads of orbs out from that one. And because of the delay with picking them up as well, you can actually use it to increase the link counter while you're moving over to the next one. But I probably didn't do that well enough to show that off. But at least we got them all in one round. Then we can just mess around for the rest of the time now. 
I love that weird animation as well, which makes Knights a bit fat when he bounces up there. Okay, you can get rid of the floor, I didn't know that. Let's leave them. It's not worth it, just for a few little points. Let's get back outside. Okay, we've got a few more seconds. I'll go and gather up a few more points. Okay, now I think I need to go back to the exit quick. I was leaving that a bit late. There we go, nine seconds left. I didn't think I did that well that time. This is the into the screen section. So. And I did that really badly. Obviously, on the first lap, you want to try and line it up to get all the blue orbs. That's better. It's kind of slow, though. It's not like the underwater bit. You can boost there, but it didn't really make that much of a difference. So that is what not to do. It's weird having that right at the start as well. Okay. Oh, I found an egg. Cool. Alright, let's try again. If it's going to let me inside. There we go. I don't know how you're supposed to keep the combo up through that bit. Maybe you're not supposed to. How did I miss that again? This is another bit where I run out of time sometimes because I risk it and go for a third round. Let's see, we've got 40 seconds. We can do a third round, I think. Let's see if we can actually pick that thing up this time. Right here, yeah, I got it. I can't tell if you broke it open or not in this version of the game. It's not as clear as it was on the sand. Is there anything else? Let's go back and get some of them just to pass the time. It's always a bit nerve wracking as well when that music starts playing. B rank, not bad. I haven't got any boost now. That was something I didn't mention, so you um, you build up the boost by going through the rings. And obviously you need the boost to get through some of the sections. Now, here's the cool bit with the, uh, the mirrors. And as you can see, sometimes the stuff only appears in the background, which is a really neat little, neat little touch to this level. I always used to find it really interesting that the way this level is designed with the floor being on the ceiling as well. It's just a really cool aesthetic. Doesn't seem like there's that much to do in this stage. Not outside, anyway. seconds. I don't think that's enough time to go back round again. Especially without any boost. That's probably something I can do for the rest of the time here, is just do that to get a little bit of a boost. And then just slide it all the way back. There we go. How was that? B, B rank again. Overall, probably a B for this one. Yep. Fun level though, it's probably my favourite level layout and design. 
Okay, now we get to fight Riala. Who actually had a first for figures uh, figure not that long ago. Which unfortunately I missed out on because I've got the Knights one. But I remember really finding this fight very difficult, but I'm pretty sure I can get through it easily now. The only problem is I didn't have much boost. So getting in front of him throwing the cards is going to be difficult. Ah! Without any boost at all. And yeah, if you get hit by the cards, obviously, as you saw, the timer goes down. Oh, I spoke so soon, I'm not going to be able to do this. Yes. Keep hitting him. 35 seconds to go. There we go. I did it. Very sloppily, but I did it. Do some tricks. You can also press both the sticks at once, and then you can do that sort of weird spin in the air and just float around in place, which I always enjoyed doing. Now, I'm going to try and press no to saving and whatever else it's asking me here. See whether it can go straight back to the level select. I don't know what it's saying. Does anyone know what that says? The, the button on the right means no, but... Um, have I got Google Translate? No, I haven't. I just got a new phone and I uninstalled it. I was going to try and see if I can translate that text. No, I can't. Okay, well it's downloaded now, so let's quickly... Yep, access the camera, okay. It thinks it wants to translate into Spanish. No, translate from detect language to English. Save all diary entry. Are you sure you want to save yes or no? No. And then it says, are you sure you want to end the save? Yes. Okay, that's what it means. So the first one is, do you want to save? And if you press no, are you sure you don't want to, basically? But let's see where that takes us. Will it take us back to the title screen? And while it's doing that, I'm going to open these. They've been sitting on my desk for a while. White chocolate Kit Kats. My favourite. So if we do have a loading screen, that's a good excuse to sit back and eat a Kit Kat. Yes, it's gone all the way back to the title screen. So saving or not saving doesn't seem to make any difference at all. I get to hear me crunch, and my new microphone doesn't have a mute button, so... Sorry. <laughs> Only got a few levels left now. It's a fairly short game, but it is one of my favourites, as I'm sure you can tell. Hmm. This level is really difficult. It's pretty easy to run out of time on this one. So the reason this one's difficult is because there's kind of a roller coaster style section that goes on for quite a while and there's no way of getting off it. So if the time runs out, you basically just continually thrust, th thrust forward, but you end up playing as Elliot instead of Knight. But the level theme is really interesting. It's basically a construction site in the desert. Which kind of makes me think of Red Canyon a bit from Sonic Adventure. In a way. And 
there's a few interesting level gimmicks to this one too. Oh yeah, I thought there was a separate path there. Let's see, have I got enough? Yeah. Now we're in bonus time, now we're gonna find the best route through here. That bit's really difficult if you want to keep the combo up on that. But you can kind of see how you do it. You have to boost in the opposite direction. Let's try again. Ah, uh, go down! Ah, oh, nearly. Nearly got all the way around. Don't, don't! Ah, oh, nearly. Okay, I give up. But almost. Well, that's probably my favourite thing about Knights is once you've gone through the level once, then you go back and try and find the best route through it. Now, here's the bit I always get annoyed with, and you'll see why. So you can lean left and right, but you don't really have that much control over it because you're always being like flung around like this. And it just goes on and on. And it's just really difficult to collect anything unless you know uh, exactly where you're going to start. And there is another one coming up as well. Oh, not on this bit, it must be a bit later on. It's a cool bit, but you can get stuck there. Let's do it again now. And I do have enough, so we don't really need to worry too much. Ah, oh, cool. Starlight got Mega Drive Mini 2. I did get it. I haven't had a chance to plug it in yet, though. I've literally been away in London all week and then came straight back to work today. And then as soon as I finished work, I was preparing for this stream. So I haven't had a chance to do anything for like a week now, so this is kind of my way of relaxing after that. But I will be plugging the Mega Drive Minion at some point soon. I only got a C rank though, damn it. There's another weird bit in this one where you sort of... Ah, here it is. So you go through this machine, and then everything you go into just gets absorbed into you, like Katamari style. But if you get hit by an enemy or something, um, then you'll lose all the extra stuff that you've got attached to you. Uh, or if you hit the sides like that, unfortunately. But the idea is to pick up as much stuff as you can, and then you deposit it back into the machine at the end. So we'll try and do that better next time. At least it still counts all of the orbs that you picked up. And there's a really awkward... Oh, I did it. Awesome. I was about to say that one's really awkward, but I got all ten in one place then. And then we do get to use the... Um, whatever you call this. What do you call it? Oh, I accidentally cancelled it out then. Ah, oh, no, I didn't mean to finish it then. Ah. Damn it. And you got B rank. Oh yeah, this this bit's pretty cool. So now you're kind of going up this skyscraper that's that's being built. And there's an annoying bit with some spikes that you'll see in a second. There, ah, oh, that bit always catches me out. And there's also bombs falling down, and those annoying triangle things can also hit you. So there's a lot to look out for in this section. But it's a cool idea for a level. Uh, watch out for them. Oh no, it got me. 
So you can easily see how this can waste a lot of time as well. Uh, the idea is to go straight down there, because there's a few extra bits to pick up. But I'm doing a horrible job at showing this off. Uh, more spikes. Yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to show this PS2 version off, because not a lot of people know that it even exists. Oh no, this is the bit I always run out of time on, and I've only got 25 seconds. Here you go. You can watch me run out of time right here. Maybe. I'll try and pick some stuff up. Like I said, picking stuff up on this section is pretty much just luck. Because, yeah, you have a little bit of control over it, but not much. God, this bit always used to terrify me, and it still is. And there you go, you go on to the second one, then you run out of time, and then night just gets thrown away, and then you're stuck as Elliot, just spinning around helplessly, and then you're just going to get thrust onto the floor at the end of it. God damn it. I knew this would happen. Now you can see why. Look how long this is. And then you just go, ah! <laughs> then you gotta gather all these up quickly before the alarm clock comes back to life. There you go. At least it's not far to go. See if you can touch the eggs. As Elliot. Yeah, you can. There you go. So you can go around and hatch the eggs and stuff. But <clears throat> Obviously, I'm going to get a bad grade for that one. A B overall, though, not bad. And yeah, there's the there's the box the PS2 version came in as well. The nice collector's edition. Now we get to fight Riella again, but this time in Elliot's story, so. Not throwing cards this time though, he's actually just attacking you the same way that you would, so. Yeah, you gotta either do loops around them, like that, or dash into them head on. It's a fun fight, I like it when games have fights yeah. against your rival who has the same skill set as you. Wow, I did that so easy. Yeah, it's got widescreen, that's why I'm playing it in now. I can show you, I guess, because when you finish a level, it takes you all the way back to the title screen anyway. <clears throat> yeah, have fun playing Bayonetta. I think you should open it up. Bayonetta 1 is not exactly a rare game. I think the Saturn version is widescreen as well, doesn't it? Pretty sure it does. Although it's kind of like fake widescreen where it just squashes things. And if you've got widescreen, you can put it in 4x3 and it'll expand it back out again. But I guess it works. Kind of. Oh, it's the box set with Bayonetta 1 and 2. That's cool. That is a nice addition as well. I'm not sure where the actual box for Nights is. I've got the storybook here. It's over there. Yes. Yes, I can reach it. There you go. That's what the PS2 version looks like. And on the back, it's got quite a busy back cover. Loads of different screenshots there. And there's the instructions for it as well. Good. Buying games to play is the best the best thing to do. <clears throat> I bought some games to play over the weekend. I haven't had a chance to play them yet though. I was pretty excited to find that. You don't see that very often. Metal Slug X. And a game I've been wanting for a long time. Does anyone know Zero Wing on the Mega Drive? The classic, all your base are belong to us meme came from that.
Yeah, anamorphic widescreen. Or fake widescreen. It was still being used all the way up until, like, the Wii era. That way of doing widescreen. Yeah, apparently Zero Wing is actually pretty fun. Like, memes aside, it's actually a good game. So I'm looking forward to playing that later. What else do I get? I got a game for the Master System, Zillion 2. Don't know if you know anything about that one. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Of course, that one's a classic. Right, which one should we do now? Claris or Elliot? Uh, these two levels are basically both the same as well. Nice to see collectors playing games. Oh, I know. I don't play games as much as I should, I guess, considering the amount that I buy. But that's kind of why I set this Twitch channel up, so I should actually be able to play some games that I buy instead of just putting them on the shelf. No. This level's different in the fact that you don't play as knights, you actually just play as the kids. And it's kind of creepy as well, so you're basically walking around in this town, and then to start the level you just jump off the edge into oblivion. And then just wait a second. It's like, whoa, she's come back, and then you can play around as Clarice. And this level is quite dif difficult, and obviously because you're not knights you don't get the spin thing that you do normally. And it's kind of difficult to tell where you need to go sometimes as well. Um, and there is a bit later on with loads of balloons that fly up that can be really challenging as well, but let's see how we do. And the other thing is you don't want to use up all of your boost, so you want to try and be a little bit uh, protective over when you use it and when you don't. But you can see the level's massive, so it's kind of difficult to uh, actually find out where things are. And the balloons get in the way and push you up as well. But, oh, only two more. I'll just do that and go back. Yeah, I'll get a bad grade, but whatever. And then you just instantly go straight onto the next part of the level. Ah, how did I manage to do that and miss the things at the start? I always mess up on them. The idea is that you boost through both of them. No, missed that. That's what you're supposed to do with it. New record. Only record. I've never played this PS2 one before. I've had the game on the PS2 for about eight years now. Oh no. Oh, the signal just cut out for a second then. I don't know whether you guys saw that. That was weird. I think I managed to pause the game though, so hopefully I didn't lose anything. Oh, that's, that's really satisfying when you do that bit all in one go. Yes, and I got past the spikes too. Oh, yeah, weird. I don't know why it cut out. I didn't move. And this is where I always run out of time. Yeah, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Pop all the bubbles and get all there. Get enough out of there. Ah, uh, I've run out of time. I don't know where the thing is. Damn it. Let's try Elliot's one. I think I was going the wrong way. Yeah, there isn't really any text in the game, so you don't really need to worry about a language barrier. And the the intro and outro cutscenes are all just animations. Yeah, and the menus and the loading screens are all in English as well, which is great. Okay, let's try Elliot's version. I'll 
try and pay a bit more attention this time and hopefully it doesn't tell me tell me that there's a signal cutting out which wasn't great Yeah, let's jump off the edge. Whee. Yeah, the only Japanese is the saving data bit for some reason. So I'm going to try and get through this as fast as possible because I always run out of time on this one. It's the balloons I keep mess messing up on. Three more. Okay, I think I've I think I've failed. I don't know what else I can do if there's no more balloons. Wow, okay, I did so badly on that first bit. Oh, I may as well I may as well just exit and then go back in. Let's try that again. Pretend that didn't happen. That didn't happen. You saw nothing. And then when I've done these, I can show you what the satin version is like as well. I wonder what happens if you jump off the edge there instead of trying to go to knights. I forgot how difficult this level is. Well, I've always struggled with it, but last time I played it, I managed to finish it on the first try on the satin which was maybe a year ago, just before I moved into this house. Oh, way better. Oh, still three more to go. But if I got the top, I should be able to find... one. Maybe that was okay? Oh, you mean with the with the noise things? Maybe it wasn't just me then. That's good. <coughs> well, I mean, it's not good, but it's good to know that it wasn't my stream messing up. Well, it still might be. I'll try and have a look after just in case. Whoa, so fast. Where am I meant to be going? Let me record again. I've got 61 seconds to do the worst bit. Uh, I hate this bit. Oh, that's got to be good, right? Where's, where's the thing to deposit them? Quick! Oh, there. where is it? Is that it? Is that it? Yeah, we did it. A rank as well. Yay! Oh, that last bit really makes your heart race. And there's Clarice come to help as well. Coming to free knights from the top of the tower. Yay. 
Now we get to go to one last boss fight. Yeah, yeah finished on an A rank as well. Awesome. And then we have to do it again as Clarice. This is a really classic Sonic Team style fight as well. Yeah, the PS2 version looks really nice. They they did a great job improving the uh, improving the graphics. Oh yeah, you have to wait for uh, wait for the other knights to come and help you out. But yeah, this is a very classic Sonic Team style final boss. It's cool to see those as actual 3D models as well, because on Saturn they're just they're just flat textures. I keep forgetting I have to wait for you tonight. Okay. It feels like a Sonic final boss. I want to live and learn to play in the background. I haven't got any speed boost at all. Come on! I think I messed that first bit up. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to get to the end now. Come on! Go and do it! Quick! Is that it? Or is there one more? Yay! We did it! That's it, that's Elliot's story finished. And we can taunt him by doing all these tricks in front of him. Mm. And you turn back into Elliot at the end. I presume that means that he's waking up. <coughs> you get to enjoy a nice little CG ending scene. Although I don't think I showed you the beginning one, but oh well, enjoy this anyway. They're identical to the Saturn, so there's nothing new about the PS2 version for this. Enjoy these super 90s CG cutscenes. It looks like something I did as a college project. <laughs> Their eyebrows are just jumping up and down. Yay! There we go. Now we get to enjoy the ending theme, and I'll try not to sing. I'll turn it off a bit so you can listen. Yeah, I've played Journey of Dreams on the Wii. I really enjoy it. A lot of people don't like it because it's very different. But I, I think it's a good game, in its own way. Enjoy this game. Maybe I'll stream the nights uh, on the way at some point. to the developers of the original game. Even that's in English. No, weirdly it doesn't even have motion controls. You can play it with a classic controller or with a Wii Remote Punch Up. There's a weird mode where you can point at the screen and draw a circle to, to make knights follow, but it's really awkward. So 
I wouldn't recommend doing it in that range. So I'm just leaving this to run through because I'm recording the footage at the same time. So I can upload that separately. Maybe I'll play the Wii version next. I've been thinking about doing a retrospective on the Mighty series for a long time now. But for whatever reason I get put off. But then someone asked me if they w wanted to do a collaboration with me. So I'm doing some of the more obscure Knights games for them. And that should be out in a few weeks time hopefully. theme is so cheesy. Yeah, it is kind of weird that most of the games in English, but it never came out in English. Like, even the credits are written in English. Even, even the text, even the text in the corner of the box is in English. You can barely see it, but so let me turn my lights down again. There you go. Yeah, even that's in English. It's kind of nonsense English, but... Huh, I've never actually read it before. I'll read it while the rest of the credits are going. As you wander through the nightmare world, you recall all of the exciting experiences. I'll turn it down a little bit. You remember floating freely, floating freely, smiling as you drifted through fantastic and beautiful lands. But you also recall fleeting, fleeing in terror from the nightmare master. Nights is an unfolding stage, a breathtaking adventure through fantastic but dangerous places. Courage and skill determine the outcome of your incredible dream. So that actually does make sense in English. Usually, uh, things like that on boxes make no sense whatsoever. But that's pretty cool. The instruction manual is all in Japanese. It even has a little postcard thing to send off to Sega in the box. And it looks like it also includes the Christmas version as well, because there's a bit about the Christmas version in the back of that box. That's cool. In the instructions, they included some of the concept art as well for the levels. I'll show all that in more detail when, I, when I've actually recorded it properly. Then we get another little cutscene after the credits. Yay! Do you want to save? Yes. And then we'll go and do that level with Claris, and then I'll show you the Sega Saturn version. And then I've got to start working on my script. And I've actually got another really interesting version of the game as well. Uh, which I have never properly played before because it's very confusing. I'll show you that in a bit as well. Uh, which version do I prefer? 
Uh, I like the original Saturn version, honestly, with the 3D controller. It just controls so well. Like, there's there's a weird thing with this version and the 360 and PS3 versions. Um, it doesn't properly have analog support, which is really weird. So basically on the Saturn, there's two different versions. There's a version that uses the D-pad, which has eight directions of movement. And then there's a version which uses the analog controller, which has full 360 degree movement. For whatever reason, when they ported it to the PS2 and then later on to the 360 and PS3, they included just the eight directions of movement, even though they have analog sticks. So you don't really get that precise movement that you do with the Saturn version. Which honestly doesn't make any sense. Ah, okay, let me come back down. Is that enough? Yay! Oh no, it's not. But well, there's some more here. I think that might finish it. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh. how did I miss that one? I don't want to use all my boost up. Damn, I might have to redo this one again. did that pretty well though. I need to remember, you really don't need to worry about uh, score so much. That's cool, I haven't seen that bit happen before. First time I managed to get through that all in one go. Where am I going? The camera's not showing me anything there. Okay, now we got 50 something seconds to do this final bit. Okay, that was pretty good. And then just gotta line this up. I always really panic before I get to this section. That's okay, maybe? There's a few more there. And the thing to deposit him is right there as well. Wow, we did it! Easy! With 26 seconds to spare. No, the, uh, the remastered versions are all based on this PS2 one. Which is weird. I think maybe if you play the Steam version, they probably fixed it on that, or you can you can probably patch it. But no, in some ways, the original Sega Saturn one's still the best one, which is really strange. Well, hey, finished with an A rank. Awesome. Now we have to go and do that fight again. Yeah, as far as I know, it's the same on Windows, but maybe in a higher resolution, maybe. Yeah, possibly. They've never re-released the Saturn version. Oh, I got a little bit of boost. I know a lot of developers have ended up losing source code over the years. It happened with Kingdom Hearts. And they, they ended up basically remaking the entire first game from scratch for the PS3 release and they've used that as a base going forward but that's insane that even a company as big as Square Enix can lose the source code to one of their biggest games obviously they lost the code to Panzer Dragoon Saga Sonic Team did so it's not out of the question that the Knights is also missing but hey I managed to get through it straight away this time that's what cost me the time in the last one Oh wow! Wow, I did that fast. Awesome, there we go. That is... That's the entire game! 
and it took one and a half hours or just a bit more. Yeah, they should get M2 to make it. Because Sega can't be trusted to make their own games. Uh, M2 is really good. Taito lost the source code to Bubble Bubble. Yeah. Luckily, that's kind of easy to, you know, decompile and build parts of it. Yeah, I guess because JRPGs take so long to make that there's so much to lose. It happened with something else as well. I can't remember though. But yeah, I know Panzer Dragoon Saga is a big one and that's one of the reasons why that's never been re-released. Oh, it happened with Silent Hill 2 as well, didn't it? Which is why that really weird version, the way it weird HD version was missing loads of fonts and fog and stuff. And for some reason they replaced it with Comic Sans, which is just hilarious. Oh right, I didn't realise Bubble Bubble was so in-depth. You didn't see in the intro cutscene, but basically Claris was being laughed at and booed off the stage for singing really badly, so... This is her overcoming that fear, basically. You can see she's really nervous to go on the stage. But Knights is here to help. La la la. The power ups you get are based on your in game actions. Oh, cool. Is that how the later versions work as well that have been re released? I guess if they're emulated, they are, but. I don't know if there's any recoded ports of Bubble Bubble that are missing those sort of features. Yeah, blurry background with sharp models is really annoying. And unfortunately, with a lot of upscaled ports of games, you, you get that quite a lot. Wow, those wheels weren't even turning on that bike then. I love old 3D like this. It's so nostalgic, but it's also kind of endearing because they thought that it was really amazing at the time. And it kind of shows that uh, pixel art holds up a lot better than early 3D does. And this was pre-rendered. This was like state of the art at the time. All the Japanese ports seem to spawn the items in the same way as the arcade game. That's interesting. I know there was loads of old ports for microcomputers in the UK, so I wonder if they were using the same code. Or the same gameplay principles. Maybe not, as I know a lot of the developers back then didn't really have contact with the Japanese developers. They were just trying to guess how things were done by playing the arcade versions of the games. So it'd be interesting to compare them and compare them to the Japanese home computer games. Or the NES or Master System or something. See how it differs. There we go. I think this is a extra cutscene because I finished it with both characters. I'm just going to Google as well and see whether it does include Christmas Nights too.
I know it doesn't have all the features of the original Saturn game. At least on the th PS3 it didn't. Sorry, you get to listen to the song again. Wow, it came out really late on the PS2. Maybe that's why it didn't get a release outside of Japan. This this PS2 version came out in 2008. That's really late. PS3 was already out for a few years by then. There isn't really any information about this PS2 version. I might just have to find out for myself. Yeah, I think people had moved on from the PS2 by then. Oh, yeah, I mean the PS3 and 360 version literally came out like a year or two after, I think. Yeah, there's literally no information about this PS2 version that I can find. Not in terms of what features it's got and stuff. Uh, yeah, it would have been it would have been 12 years after the original. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it would have been 12 years. Although when the PS2 came out, this game could have come out only four years after the original. So. That is how much of a big gap there was on the same system. That's pretty crazy. I might have to do a bit of a dig after this live stream to find out about this PS2 version. If I could search in Japanese, maybe I'd find something. There's a, a debug menu. Okay, there's a code to unlock everything. There's an unlockable two-player mode, which I should have got now. There's different credits music if you complete the game with all A ranks. Yep, get twin seeds if you finish all the stages with three or more. Oh yeah, it'd be great to get a Geek Slime book for the Saturn. Hopefully there will be one at some point. Okay, if you set the PlayStation 2 clock to April the 1st, you get to play as Riala in Spring Valley. That's cool. Oh cool, you got some of the some of their books. That's awesome. Which ones did you get? I'm glad they had them in stock, because I had some people comment on that video and say that they were out of stock when they went to look for them. Which is a bit sad.
Okay, you can unlock Christmas Nights in the PS2 game by uh, getting A ranks on every stage. And if you complete Christmas Nights with both characters, you get a special Christmas Nights gallery, a Nightopian viewer, and tracksuits for the characters to play with as well. So I think that's basically saying, congratulations, you unlocked Christmas Nights into Dreams. Got the PC Engine, N64, and SNES ones. Awesome. They are really good books, aren't they? The amount of detail they go into is just insane. And there's so many like pictures of how, how everything's put together and all the history behind how the consoles are made and stuff. They're so cool. Oh, you have to get one off eBay. There we go. Now we've got Christmas Dream as well. But let's have a look at Sega Saturn Dream. And if I remember right... Oh, the signal's gone again. Weird. Yeah, it uses all of the original Saturn models, but it keeps the same uh, levels and stuff that you've already done before. So let's try and get an A rank on this level, but using the Saturn version. So you can see the difference. A lot of the 3D models that were on the PS2 version are now flat. Uh, like J basically JPEGs. But it still uses the same engine, so it's not actually the Saturn version. It just looks like it. Oh yeah, and because we finished the game and because we've found and saved... Yeah, it might be a resolution change that caused the um, signal to cut out then. Um, because we've rescued a certain amount of Nightopians, the music's actually changed. And the more Nightopians you rescue and the more of those little things you pick up, then basically the happier they get and the music changes and there's different environmental things that go on in the stage. You can also upset them by basically by just knocking into them. By boosting into them, so you don't want to do that. Oh yes, look at that combo. 27 link. I used to watch YouTube videos of people playing nights, like, competitively, and, oh my god, some people are just insane. Like, how fast they can build up, like, 100 plus chains. As much as I like the music changing based on how well you've done in the game, I still prefer the original versions of all the songs, so I actually get a bit annoyed when I have to listen to the remixes. Because the original tunes are so good on their own. One more. Let's see if we can get a full combo. No. It feels faster as well, for some reason. I don't know whether the frame rate's better. No, I missed a load then. It's cool they include both versions. I was kind of sad they didn't include the original game on... Uh, on Journey of Dreams for the Wii as well. I thought that would have been a nice addition for people who haven't played the first one. And it shouldn't have been that hard to add it to it. They could have ported the PS2 game to the Wii and had it as a bonus, maybe.
Uh, yeah, maybe it wouldn't fit. My original Wii couldn't read dual layer discs and when Smash Bros came out I had to send it off to Nintendo to get a new laser put in there. Because for whatever reason some of some launch day systems just refused to read dual layer DVDs. They would just come up with a question mark. So when Brawl came out, even though I was so excited to get it day one, I couldn't actually play it for like another two weeks because I had to wait for it to come back from their factory to get it fixed. Which was very upsetting for me at the time. Oh, you had the same with yours as well. I think it was an issue with quite a lot of the early systems. Must not have been tested properly. I think I'm doing much better this time. I think I've got A ranks on every round so far. Oh, there's nothing up there. That's weird. Why have such a big open space? Honestly, the satin graphics still look really nice. I think it's because of how bright the colours are. They still hold up really well on their own, even compared to the PS2's more rounded graphics. I think the main difference is there's more pop-in. Which I'm pretty sure the pop-in on this version is authentic to the original, like, in terms of how much there is on the screen. I love doing tricks as well. I forgot when I was playing through most of the main game I wasn't doing tricks, but for some reason I'm I'm just pressing the R and R buttons all the time now. Let's go for one more round. Oh I missed all of you. I don't think you actually get anything for doing tricks, but it just looks cool. Another A rank? Yeah! I think that was full A's on that one. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I was kind of spacing out then. I was really getting in the zone. Yeah, when the Wii came out, people were just buying them like crazy. I'm not going to try and do the tail trick. It's too risky. Basically, you do a loop on his tail right at the start, and you can actually kill him in one hit but you have to be really close to the tail and if you're only like a few pixels out then it'll end up hitting you instead and you can easily whittle away all your time down to nothing just from attempting to do that over and over again and then you have to redo that level from the beginning and because I got all A ranks I don't want to do all that again I might try and get A ranks on the other stages just so I can officially say I've unlocked everything on this PS2 version. There we go, that was a really easy boss fight. And then press them both together and you can stay in place and do that weird handlebar spin thing. Whatever that is. 
And you can do another one as well if you press both the back triggers. There's one way you just spin around in circles too. Yay! And while this is loading, I'll go and get the other Nights and Streams thing that I was telling you about a minute ago. So, one second. So this is the other thing that I'll be showing off in that video. It is the Knight's Tiger LCD game. And I tried playing it. Uh, I have very carefully opened this at the bottom there, so you can slide it out. But I could not make sense of the game at all. Did I keep any batteries in there? No, I took the batteries out. It's in amazing condition, though. Look how clean that is. So I'm going to try and figure out how to actually play it properly for this video. But it's really awful from what I played. It just didn't make any sense. But I was just really happy to have it. It's, it'd been on my eBay watch list for many, many years and I actually found it in a shop. So very excited to find it, even if it is a bit rubbish. Let's go back to the brand new dreams. We want to see the PS2 version, not the Saturn version. Let's see what levels I've still got to get A ranks on. I know the construction site one. I need to do that one again. No, oh, most of them actually. I don't know if I can be bothered to go through all them right now. Oh yeah, this is another thing that I haven't showed you. So you can also see the actual course that the level takes. So if you remember that one in Soft Museum, that's the one where you bounce off the walls and fly through. So it's cool actually seeing the laps like that. And you can do that for each of the stages as well. So if we go back on the one that we were just on, you can see the different loops there are around it. It's really interesting seeing it like this because when you're playing, you don't really realize how 3D it is and the sort of environment that you're in. So I love, I love seeing that. Ah, I didn't mean to go back in the stage then. There was something else I wanted to show you as well. Maybe we can do it. So you've got, to you've got to press pause and then hold L1, R1 and press triangle all at the same time. we got different music again. <coughs> so let's... Just start flying around and then pause it and see if this works. It should give you the status. Okay, I don't really know what that means. DSS info. Apparently that is the Nightopian status, but it didn't really seem to do anything. Uh, let's go and see if there's anything else that's been unlocked in the gallery. And we can have a look at the Christmas dreams as well, so let's have a look in here. We should have some more stuff. Yeah, there's only one left now. So this is just various bits of concept art and 3D renders. I wish there was a project like the Mario 64 project where they would go and try and recreate the levels using this kind of really early 3D aesthetic. I think that would look really cool. So let's have a look through a few more of these. These are just stills from the cutscenes for some reason. Oh, that was pretty cool though. A design for the tower. Some random posters and artwork. Don't know why that one took so long to load. That's the classic picture that everyone remembers. 
And then you got the Christmas ones at the bottom, which I'm guessing are the same as what you unlock on the Saturn Christmas game. Yeah. Only this winter. Only every winter for me. Not seen that one before. Oh, come on. You can also use the stick to zoom in and pan around. I don't know what it means by that. Volume 146. Is that a magazine cover, maybe? It's cool they included all this. And then there's one more to unlock, which I'm guessing you get for finishing the Christmas game. And there's also the movie theatre. Oh, yeah, that is a bit sad. There's all movies I've seen, so there's still three more to look at. I'm guessing they're from the Christmas game. Or maybe one of them is for getting all A ranks. So let's have a look at the Christmas stream anyway, see how that differs to the Saturn one. Whoa, it's in Japanese. I've not actually heard this in Japanese. Sega's still doing pretty well for themselves, even without a console. I think they're doing okay. The Yakuza series has done really well for them. And Sonic Frontiers is looking promising. I played it at MCM last weekend and it was really good. I did really enjoy my time with it. So fingers crossed it, the full game is as good as the demo was. I'm really looking forward to that game. Maybe I'll stream it. Maybe. I want to get back to streaming the Sonic games. I did start a while ago. I was planning on playing through Sonic Advance 3 next. Maybe I'll do that once I've got this video out of the way. Oh yeah, Bayonetta's great. I haven't got Bayonetta 3 yet though, because I'm not really sure when I'd find the time to play that, because I've still got Xenoblade 3 to play on the Switch yet. Oh yeah, Sega's got loads of random franchises these days. It's, it is kind of weird to see the really big range of different projects that they've got. I know they do all of the football um, team management games and stuff as well, and the Total War series, and loads of really weird things that you wouldn't properly associate with Sega. Oh yeah, Persona as well. See, they're doing they're doing well for themselves. And obviously the SMT spin-offs and things. Yeah, Bayonetta 1 didn't really sound very well, so that's why Bayonetta 2 was a Wii U exclusive, which upset a lot of people at the time. But, you know, what other alternative were they? Nintendo wanted to pay for it. So... Although I doubt many people bought a Wii U just to play Bayonetta 2. It was a good game, though. But I guess there wasn't really that many diehard fans of the first one willing to buy a completely different console just for one game. Like Nintendo were probably hoping. They were probably hoping people would want to do that. So here we go. This is what Christmas Nights looks like on the PS2. Obviously, you get the all the Christmas themed decorations and everything, all the Christmas themed sound effects and music. It feels weird playing this in November. It's a month early. But uh, if you don't if you don't know the Christmas version of Nights into Dreams is only one level. Well, two levels, one for Clarice and one for Elliot, but that's all.
Oh, I keep missing them ones. The layouts are the same as the main game, though. Oh, yeah, I thought the prices for Bayo 2 would go up once 3 came out. Uh, I know people were upset that... Oh, Signal's died again. People were upset that Digital Foundry was complaining about the performance of Bayonetta 3, but, you know, that's what their channel's about. I don't know why people would complain about them for telling the truth, but some people are just weirdly obsessive about things like that. I, won't under I can't understand why they would defend a company if, you th if they could have done better. But whatever. That's up to them. I'm not doing very well for combos this time. Oh, I nearly hit him. I haven't shown you what that looks like yet. They, they sort of jump back and eventually they can get angry. Yeah, I really hope Nintendo comes up with a, uh, a better processor for the Switch or something soon. Surely 2023 has got to be the year that a new Switch comes out. Surely. I don't know how long they can last with this outdated hardware now, really. Especially if they still want third-party ports of games. It's just not going to be possible soon at all. Unless everything just goes to cloud versions, but that is not the way I want things to go. I don't think that's the way anyone wants gaming to go, all cloud versions. Except Logitech, they made their little cloud uh, handheld device thing, but that was kind of funny because they um, sold it as a way of playing Stadia, but then Stadia just folded straight after. That was doomed to fail from the start, though. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they want to cannibalize sales of their own system, so. It might be a few more years, but eventually they'll have to make something new, surely. They're literally like squeezing every ounce of performance out of the Switch that they can at this point. Ow. Hi, hi, we got someone new in the chat. I can't stop playing long enough to see what your name is, but hello. Thanks for stopping by. It feels wrong playing the Christmas version so early. I wonder if you've still got all the presents to unlock, because there wasn't really any anything to actually unlock, so I'll be interested to see what happens when I finish this. Because basically on the Saturn one, you get um, like one of those flipping the card things over and you have to make matches. And then when you make a match, you unlock a certain present that you can then look at, like concept art or bonus features and stuff. Yeah, indies are propping the Switch up, really, I think. Although... People love playing indie games on the Steam Deck as well, so I don't know if there's a bit of competition there now that might make the sales of Switch indie games a bit less, maybe? Perhaps? 
Maybe only in the more hardcore gaming space, but... I don't know if there's that many casuals that actually play indie games that much. I think they would probably just stick to the more well-known titles. So maybe Steam Deck relate into the Switch's indie game sales slightly. Probably not that noticeable though. Let's keep going around. Can I do one more loop? Or am I going to run out of time? Maybe if I go really fast. Boost. Whee! I like that bit when the wind lifts you up there. You can just hold right and let it take you all the way up. Oh, made it with nine seconds to go. That was close. Yay, four A ranks in a row. Wow, perfect. Yeah, Nintendo just cares about their own country, I guess, but... It's not really a bad thing, I suppose. I wish Nintendo made more, like, interesting first-party games, though. It does feel like... It feels like for a long time now they've kind of taken a step back in terms of game development. Yeah, it feels like Sony's trying to make themselves a Western brand, which is a bit weird. They should stick to their roots more. But at least Nintendo's there to fill that gap. I do find it a bit weird though that there's only like still the main three after all this time. You'd think there would be some more competition. I wish Sega would come back into the console business. Or at least have their own sort of hardware. Yeah, it's weird when Nintendo senses things less than Sony. Yay, there we go. A rank. Now let's see if I actually unlock anything for finishing that in the Christmas version. That's asking if I want to save. <laughs> yeah, Sega solved stick drift. With... Well, it's not there. Maybe I'll put it away. I had the 3D controller out earlier. But it doesn't look like I actually unlocked anything. Oh, we finally get the actual theme tune in the replay for some reason. I don't know why that doesn't always show. A Night Tech Splatoon crossover. That'd be interesting. What Knights Discord is that? I might be interested in joining it if it's uh, if it's a public one. I'm a huge fan of the Knight series. I was just saying before you joined that I'm recording all this for a video, and the next thing, the other thing I'm going to show off is the Knights Tiger Electronics game. I've got the packaging for it there as well. And the third thing I'm going to be showing is the Knights Pinball Table and Sonic Pinball for the GBA. Yeah, Sega's probably not big enough to make a console, at least not in uh, not in a big big enough scale. Anyway, they had enough trouble in getting the Mega Drive Two out. Let's see if that filled out the gallery. Hmm. No, there's still one more thing left. Yeah, true. Consoles have kind of lost their way a bit. There's not really anything that special about them anymore. Anyway, guys, I've been streaming for two and a half hours now, and I've pretty much captured footage for everything that I wanted to show in this PS2 version of Nights. Uh, just so you did see the TV screen options, you've got normal and wide there. And... That's just showing the, um, the boss fights and your best scores for them. And there is a little bit of a sound test as well where you can listen to the music from the different stages too.
Although you can't listen to that as you're going to, through the menu, which is a bit annoying. And that's it. I'm probably going to end it there. I'll probably stream again soon. I'm kind of tempted to stream the Wii game now after playing this one. But thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for keeping me company while I played one of my favourite games as well. So hope you all have a good evening. And I'll be streaming again soon. Sooner, I hope, than I did last time. It's been a few weeks, I know. So thank you, everyone. Anyway, and goodbye. See you all again soon.